Hey you guys, welcome back. It's been a little bit, it's been a minute since I've had a video out. Sorry about that, but I'm gonna get uh, get things rolling again. Uh, today, we're gonna be doing a Mexican-American flag theme helmet. Same prep as always. Um, take all the stickers off, do the degreaser, um, scuff it up, put an adhesion promoter on it, and then um, start, start the prep work. Um, the, this particular uh, customer, or the, this helmet is going to have the Mexican flag facing the pitcher. It's a right-handed batter, got an extended chin guard, uh, and then the American flag will be on the right-hand side. It'll face the crowd when they're at bat. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. What we got to do is we're going to have to prepare for the, where the cracks are going to be. Shake up the paint here. Nice little. We'll set the cracks. Uh, kind of start here and we're just kind of we're roughing them in right now. This is um, just a rough end so we can kind of get us a line. We're going to put it now. The name's going to be on back so we'll leave some space here. Go up. And that'll be kind of where we'll tape and do some taping to kind of make our edges nice and crisp. So now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to bore you with me taping everything off but I'm just going to put some tape around all these spots uh, to give me my uh, area to where we're going to paint the Mexican flag and just to kind of show you where I'm at there putting that last piece of tape on there right across the edge there all right now that's kind of where most of the of the cracks will actually be um, when we get started on that and I will go ahead and make sure that whenever we're starting to spray the colors um, then I will tape off and mask off all the other parts that are um, going to expose just the background of the helmet. I'm in the process of trying to design something to where it looks more um, professional. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to basically make a kind of a wavy line through some tape on a cutting board and this will kind of give me the, the edge that I'm going to need and I'm just doing a gentle subtle wave and this kind of simulates the or the fold of a flag that's actually draping something. And I'm going to only need, I'm going to need a red and a green side. So basically all I need to do is get my edge, peel that down. All right, now we know that the inside, the middle portion of this is going to be um, white. All right, so what we'll do is basically just line out where we want the, now I know that I know the red side is going to have to be over a little bit further so the emblem will be able to show everything and not get caught off on the visor. So I'm going to come over just a little bit more for this, all right? And if I have to move it, I will. It's not a big deal. It's always a good thing about before you um, throw everything down, you can always move it around. Now we'll just check and kind of see where we're at based on where that's going to fall. And I am going to have to bring that over some more. Uh, yeah get your reference of where you're going to be and as far as how, how much room you got when you're holding your hands out. Oop, wrong way. Sorry. Yeah, look what I did. Okay. We want the inside of that to be white, so I got to make sure that I put this toward the outside. We're human. All right, so this will go down like this. Kind of give us the, the reference to that. All right, now everything inside here is going to be and this will go on this end. All right, so basically, I'm gonna need enough to kind of come down. And this will also, this side, the color will also um, go into the, the guard, the chin guard over here on the side. And then if I have to, I can make some more cracks over there if I need to, to, to tidy it up. All right, so now that should fall. I don't think I do on this side. I think I am on this side. All right, now all this will be white down in here all right so we still got enough room we'll line that up once we're done with the paint okay so now the, the next step is to go ahead and 
tape up the middle and we can use different tape. I, mean, I use wider pieces of tape just because it's a lot easier. Sure living in different times, that is for sure. All right, guys. Basically, that is what we're going to do. Now, one thing you can do, you don't have to mask off the whole thing if you just kind of put like little edges of tape down and give yourself um, a little bit of a flare, uh, kind of like this, and just kind of flare it out to where you kind of catch the overspray like that. That'll be just fine. I mean, you don't have to, you'll be able to stop that overspray from going out into the other end. And I'll show you how to fix some of these little, well, and I don't want to say mistakes, we want to call happy accidents. As Bob Ross would say, there are no mistakes. But sometimes, you know, we got to fix some things that we don't like. <laughs> All right, so here, I'm just going to go right up here and just kind of give me a, I don't even have to worry about the top part of that, but I'll go here and kind of catch that little bit of a flare there, and then right up here on the end over there. Right up there, that's what we need. And that'll be enough so we don't have any overspray. Get right there in the end. That's the cool part. And if we do make a little thing in there, I can, I'll can show you how to fix it. All right, now, we just gotta make sure that we put the right colors on there. It's gonna be red and green. One of the things you always wanna check is make sure that your paint, you always got enough paint uh, to do your jobs that you're doing. It's kind of a bad deal to run out when you're trying to middle and have to mix some more back up. But anyway, I've got a little stainless steel balls on some of these paint mixing balls and also have marbles. Kind of helps keep your paint nice and mixed. This is mixed with, by the way, um, you've got balancing clear and you've also got reducer, uh, 4011 reducer. I use Createx Wicked Paints and you've got to thin your paint enough to where it's going to flow right. And that's the biggest key, guys, to any airbrush. You're going to have to keep your equipment clean the needle tip clean and you're also gonna have to reduce your paint to where you know it, it flows nice all right now what we want to do on this we're going to simulate um the folds and the flag so when we're doing these um like a u-shape if you will it's kind of light light coats just to kind of get it going and see where we're going to be and then we'll kind of darken it up as we go along and then we'll do the other side with green the same kind of flow because in the middle we're going to have the gray to simulate some of the shadows on the white so kind of plan ahead a little bit and just kind of think ahead and see where you're gonna what you're gonna do so the whole overall flow of this will be like this and i still white highlights in later but kind of get nice and nice color laid down there kind of showing you what i'm doing here this is uh mixing balls that i can put into green got a couple of those in there i've got balancing clear um got 40 30 balancing clear here and then 40 11 reducer and then you just shake it up, let it sit. I have to let this sit for a little bit to kind of mix and emulsify into the paint. All right, got the green. So again, following the same uh, flow of this curvature on our stroke. I'm just going to kind of lay this out nice and gentle, a little bit heavier. And then I can come back in when I do my shadows and then darken up some of those areas there then fix that when it goes around there if I need to. All right, that'll give us the, a little more on the light. A little more, I don't want that to be a slight. All right. Okay, so here we're gonna go ahead and take off the tape in the middle here, and then I'll show you what we gotta do next. And if there's any overspray, which a lot of times there is, I mean, and you can't help that sometimes, guys. I mean, you're trying to do the best you can sometimes, and. There's times where overspray happens, and so then we have to fix it. Fix it. You got, you've got paint, you got white paint, you got red paint, you got all kind of colors of paint. So now we're going to pull this up. Now one thing you do want to be careful of is you don't want to pull into the paint. You want to pull out, you know, away from what side you're going on. So this right here is going to be. This one doesn't matter because you're in the middle. Pulling this this tape away back or away from the paint that we've laid the line down. So we're going to come back this way, and you should have a nice crisp line. And then that's what we'll, okay. And so, the other side with the red, we'll do the same thing, but come this way. And it gives you a nice crisp line, like into there where you don't really have too much to have to correct. And that's just a trial and error, man. Trust me, I've had to repair and do cleanup work on a lot, okay? So, 
can kind of see the theme here where we're going for. That'll give us that, and then okay, a few minutes. So while that's drying, we'll go to the other side, and we'll work on the American side. Now the American flag will go on this side, and we're going to do the exact same thing, kind of trace out some uh, lines for our cracks. And that's how I do that. So then it just kind of gives you your area, and then I'm going to once again tape off uh, these cracks just like the other side. And so I'm going to go ahead and spare you the pain of watching that. For those of you who want to see a couple of them, though, you can take a straight piece of tape, start on it like this, lay your line down, and tape it. Bore you with all this, and here I am talking, Gavin. That's fine. That's all right. Um, but anyway, the, what the dynamics do, or, or what kids do when they change in a year or two, when they start to understand the game, and then they start to think when they're actually playing instead of out there playing in the dirt. <laughs> so it's, and it's funny to watch. You know, you go to some of those ball games, and some kids aren't, aren't paying attention to the ball game. They're out there playing in the sand. And uh, then when the ball comes to them, they had no idea. Then a couple years later, man, they're out there thinking, hey, oh, play the first, let's go. You know, get it. They, they got it. They understand it. So it's pretty cool. I, I just think that's so cool to watch that. And whatever sport it is, you know, basketball, football, whatever. And I've got a nephew, man. He's going to be on the NBA, Quentin Bolts. And uh, he is something else now. And he can put that ball in that hoop from anywhere in the court, three points all day long. And he does a good job. I'd like to give myself credit. I taught him how to play basketball. I'm just teasing. I do tease him every time I see him, though. I'll say, you want Uncle Mike to go out and show you how to how to play ball? <laughs> and it's funny because <laughs> he's good. He, he, he's got her down, too. And let's see. That's going to be another piece. I might have to get another roll of tape. Okay, got the blue just like I had said before. And on this one, there's not really any anything. Remember that on a flag, though, no matter proper flag etiquette, uh, you always want the blue facing forward. So if it's on the right-hand side, then obviously the the blue will be on the right-hand side. So then we're just going to line up. This will be kind of where it flows, and we'll just kind of do it like this. And again, this is a reference, too, guys. This is not 100% exact. I think it's kind of cool because, you know, you're trying to simulate, you know, a wave and a flag. And so when we do this, we tape it off, then, you know, the the stripes don't have to be exactly 100% equal, spaced out, because they're going to have waves in it. And we're simulating that uh, flag roll, or waves anyway. So now, same thing here. I'm going to tape off this side. I'll do the exact same thing with this. Bring a piece of tape down like this. We'll make it work. All right, guys. Here, blue, same kind of thing, same concept. Now, I do want to go, you want to make sure you kind of go down these edges. And again, that minimizes that overspray. But I can tell you what, man, I, I can go down through here as much as I think is, oh my gosh, that's got to be down. And I'd be darned if, it, you know, you come back up there and you take it off and you've got, you've got a color that washed way down in there somewhere. And it's just frustrating sometimes. But hold on, got our blue paint. And this will be... Kind of a phthalo dark blue and i've always i mean it's hard to match the the navy navy blue that we have on our flag but man it's a here's what we're going to do here so again kind of following the same concept sorry about that mess same concept coming small you kind of like strokes building up nice and easy as far as our thickness And one of the things too, if you don't angle your hand like this, you've got a lot more chance of getting overspray underneath the tape. You kind of come straight on perpendicular to um, where you're gonna, where your line's gonna go, and it makes it a little bit better um, to be able to minimize that overspray. And I mean, I found that helps a lot. And I just try to, you know, you just try to minimize the mistakes that you got to fix. And that right there is about made. <laughs> Take blue down there. I'm going to talk about that and show you another one. And I got a new camera. This is a, um, I had the uh, GoPro Hero 8. And I've been doing some reviews on some things. And I got this new Insta360 or Ace Pro. Yeah. And uh, I kind of like it. it but it, I, it's just a little bit bigger. And it's just kind of, I'm bumping it every time I'm moving my hand. I've got to still learn the distance that I've got with this camera. 
and uh, kind of like it. I had a lot of good reviews. It's got a flip-up screen, kind of helps you frame out some things a little better. 8K, if you film in 8K, not that I'm going to film a lot of stuff in 8K. Um, but mainly I'm doing this to try to get my channel going. So again, if you like and subscribe, it helps me out a little bit. We really like to get it. I'd like to do this more on a full-time basis as opposed to kind of a part-time thing. And here I'm going to just kind of do my layers to darken this paint down just to get it where it's dark, darker blue. Now this again will have darker uh, edges around uh, some of these crack lines so it'll give it some three-dimensional depth. Uh, so now what we got to do is we're going to have to go ahead and pull this tape off and spray a little bit. We'll dry that off and then we'll spray a little bit uh, of matte finish over that so when we put the stars on and we tape the other side of that it's not going to peel up. So give me just a second and I will... Okay. Coming back here. Now this one we're going to pull this back and back up. And then here again is where you got to be careful just so that paint doesn't pull. So we're going to pull down and back like this. And see that nice crisp line? That's what we want. That's what you're looking for. Minimizes all your having to fix some of the over spray or under spray, whatever you want to call that. All right. So I'm going to take a hair dryer. So you want to hear. Sorry about that. All right, guys. So now there's a couple of things that I like to do. I'm going to go ahead and um, spray some matte over that just because I like to make sure that that's on there. Because if I put that, if you, as you're putting star stencils on there, you can sometimes move and scratch it. So nice little light matte coat, and then that'll dry. Then we'll be able to tape the sister edge to this, which was over here. Um, you can see that right there? You got a little, little hair. A little hair in there. <laughs> it's crazy when all these little boogers get in there. All right, so I'm going to hit pause, let that dry. Okay, guys, on this, uh, we know I've already went ahead and taped this stencil up there to kind of know where it's going to go and line up. Now, a lot of times on, on some of this, you'll have to basically... You're going to have to hold that stencil down in place. You already know uh, where, you know, what's going to be yellow and what's not. So we're going to go ahead and back a little bit of yellow where his beak's going to go. Put a little bit where I know where his feet are going to go. Okay. So we already know that that can be a little bit gold. Some of these little things here are gold. So now I'm just going to switch. I think that right there is also one. And uh, laid the brown in, and now I'm going to go ahead and hit that with a, a hair dryer just to let that kind of get set in. Okay, so now we're going to go with some more green. Pull that down. that sit a little bit of these little bit of details and things. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we've also got acrylic markers that we can go in and um, draw in some of the real intricate details that uh, you may have to have in there. Okay. Fix these little spots here, a little green. That's no big deal. We'll fix that just a bit. Uh, I'm going to paint on some lines with yellow just because it's a little bit easier to control with a marker. So do that. Color in the orange for his eye. A little more highlights and some shading, a little depth to the feathers. And then we'll I'll show you what we'll do going around these cracks here in just a bit. And 
And what you can do uh, also is throw a little bit of a straight edge on some of these to give them a little bit more definition. Uh, if you're ever doing these kinds of things, make sure that you hit the stencil and then bounce off the, onto the onto the um, medium that you're painting. I mean, this kind of gives you a little more um, depth on some things. You don't have to be perfect on all, just a little highlight here and there. That just gives the indication of the folds of the flag. Of the flag. All right. Um, then on the other side, we'll continue to do the American flag. That should be dry now. We'll put stars on there. But I'm going to go ahead and put the stars on last just because uh, I'm going to go ahead and tape up this side and then tape the stripes for the red, white, and blue. Um, and then that way when I peel that back, it won't have, I won't have to worry about uh, matting. Uh, putting a clear coat of matte on it again. So now you just take the other image of the line that we cut and lay it right up on where you're going to be. And line that down. And the rest of it will we will cover. We're going to do the same thing, cutting up um, two or three different um, flag stripes and we'll go with red i usually start with the red i mean knowing obviously there's only four stripes on the blue but we're not really concerned with that because again this is not i mean it would extend all the way down so it's it's just a the uh, replication of the flag so i'm gonna cut strips just like i did this uh, on the um, mat and then we'll tape those up we'll keep uh, white obviously um, matted or uh, taped over one thing notice whenever I'm taping off the stripes, the curved edge or the one where it's going to show a wave um, is on the outer edges of each one. So this will be the red stripe, that'll be the white stripe, this will be the red, and again, and then I'll come down another one for um, another red and white. So you just want to make sure that you're not putting a flat straight edge on the outside of it. And you try to make them semi equal I mean I'm I'm not worried about it being 100% correct because there, obviously there's folds and stuff but you do want it to be you don't want one to be like three inches and the other one an inch and a half I mean and then you just take another piece of tape right down the middle of that seal that up and you need another piece on the end just so you don't get overspray most important thing on these is just try to get those edges down to where that um, paint can't creep in there. You'd be surprised how far it can it can go. When you're spraying that red, man, it'll get down in there. It's easy to fix, but just why have to do it, you know, if you can prevent it to start with. just trying to prevent a problem that's what I'm gonna do now we take red we do the exact same thing as we did with the blue coming in with the same angles and Okay, so here we're just going to again peel back and hopefully we don't have too much overspray to have to contend with. If we do, again, we can fix it. So, all this stuff over here. Um, drop that piece. Okay. 
peel these down towards the outside away from the paint now one of the things I'm going to be doing I'm going to leave the, the crack tape because I'm going to throw some um, dark colors on there just to give it some depth around some of these um, inside edges so I won't be taking that up yet I will get that here in just a little bit but the first thing I'm gonna when I get these off is I will um, put the put the depth on the on the crack part and that's gonna be like right in here you'll see some of that there we go there we go this we've already matted that blue all right and then we'll go ahead and peel this back Okay, now that's kind of how you can still see the, the way, um, the um, direction of where the uh, shadows would be in the folds and a little bit of overspray in here, but I'll clean that up with a little bit of white. Um, now we're going to put some stars up here and then we'll go ahead and do the uh, shadows with the um, continuing into the white. Uh, that's just a little bit of gray um, paint. So, and and this is where uh, you can do a couple different ways um, with the stars depending on you know which side you're going with or whatever I try to you know just kind <clears> of <throat> keep them consistent and they're different shapes or they're, they're not exactly uh, flat stars so they're going to be kind of like again the the quick twists and turns of the of the folds uh Then I try to get it as flat as I can have it against the direction of the stencil so I don't have any overspray underneath it. And obviously, you don't go up on, you can go across the tape is fine, but you know, there's no sense of displacing paint. Get that effect. And if you wanted to put a little more indications up, like up at the top, you could. If you wanted to give it a little bit, like maybe another star up in there. Uh, you can do that as well, but there's no reason to. I mean, people get the idea of what it is and try to just be, um, you know, given that that um, illusion of the flag. So, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the with the gray and just kind of continue to use little lines and shadows in from the folds of the into the white. to the of the stars as well. <clears throat> now what I'm gonna do on this is just add some depth to the crack areas. And then this kind of gives a little it pushes everything back so gives you that shadow effect. I'm not worried about so much of being I could spend a lot more time and, and go over like every little shadow which it's not it's not needed. Now, if you were doing a, a helmet you were going to spend hours on, then obviously you could you could get more in depth and take your time. And I mean, again, ball helmets versus motorcycle helmets where you're painting things and and um, people are spending a heck of a lot more money on some things. <clears throat> you obviously can you know you're getting an effect, but you also can spend a lot more time uh, doing other effect. I mean, getting more detail. I mean, and that just comes with you know how much money you want to spend and you 
Everything else? Okay. Now, I want to take this tape off. Oh, hold on just a second. Now, when we take when we take this tape off, you'll see that there's going to be um, where we have the indication of where those cracks are going to be. Then we'll add the cracks, uh, outline the outline them, and then add the, the other effects of it breaking the helmet. spray is not a big deal right there because I'm going to outline that crack out anyway. That's the good thing about some of this. Some of this overspray over here. I'll have to clean up with some white. you can see now what that looks like and then we'll go trace over all these um, areas with the black clean up any of the other areas that we need to um, and be done and I like to throw in some uh, shadows on each one of those so kind of like more depth and just more shadows and this gives it a little different effect. Give some depth in some of those. Now you also know the name's going to be over here on the side, so I got to be. I try to. I tend to kind of just let that be a little bit and see where that name's going to fall. Way, so you again got to pay attention to what you're doing at the end of it. I just kind of throw shadows here and there. More depth to the crack. You can highlight with white on the end of it. When you're done. It just kind of gives a little bit more, a little bit more detail, a little bit more depth, a little bit more um, character. All right, so that's kind of how we're doing a little drop shadow and some of these kind of makes it just give it, I don't know, a little more uh, organic look. All right, so for that, you just kind of keep that. Um, kind of just see a little bit. Same thing on this side, we'll do the, add more depth and stuff into the cracked areas. And again, this just kind of gives everything that setback look. Uh, like it's down deeper and you know they're kind of coming a little further in all right let's park okay same thing here we're going to just come down with the cracks in the tape 
Pull that all off. I'm just not worried so much about some of these little pieces of tape uh, because they're just, it's just hard to keep them stuck on anything to kind of reuse them. There you go. Had that zoomed in, I'm sorry. There we go. Got it out there. All right, it's going to do the same thing as I did on the other side, and then we'll uh, add the stitching and everything else. And I will clear up some of this overspray. So this stuff I'm going to go ahead and wipe off real quick now, just because I don't have anything cleared on it. So all these little pieces of uh, or overspray, a little bit of black, I'm just going to go ahead and wipe that down real quick. Okay. The name Alvarez is going to be on the back. Go right across to here. Okay, the A is in the middle, so we got an A R E Z Alvarez. So we just kind of lay out the letters a little bit, just kind of make them see where we want them to go, and then we'll go from there. We'll thicken them up a little bit, same angle, then we'll come in and stylize them a little bit. Kind of cool. Put that on there like that. Now we can let the letters morph 
uh, when you're doing these. It doesn't, I mean, as long as you lay out your letters, uh, there's <clears throat> certain things on some letters that you gotta have to let people know that that's what the letter is. And uh, like A, certain things have to be there. The V, we'll, we'll pull the V and the A, it might be able to morph it in together a little bit. And I'll come up here and, and bring it over. Yeah, we'll see. But, um, yeah, there's lots of things on certain letters. You don't have to be 100% um, like show every little part of every letter, but there's certain things on certain letters that people have to see so people know that it's like an A or a B or something else. Lay down a little bit for this one. See what we can do with the black and kind of bit of uh, detail in some of the lettering just cleaning up a little bit of the lines um, and so there you go there's Alvarez uh, in a kind of a graffiti style what we'll uh, do with that uh, so now what we're gonna do is put on the stitching the first thing we'll do is draw a line uh, to where kind of like the seam of the baseball will be so we'll just kind of and it kind of just kind of comes down to the end And it always ends up usually lining up to where it's pretty um, um, even, the way you kind of throw it in. So, and so now what we'll do is we'll just line our stencil up and just kind of start laying in our stitching. Nice light coats, kind of gives us a little bit of spacing. minimizing scratching any of the, the artwork that's already on there same thing going back up the other way it's better if you can go ahead and get it at that angle line them all up and just do them all at once and you want to kind of see there's no reason to put another stitch anywhere down here because um, it'll be faded into um, the uh, color down around the name. So now we'll work, let that dry a little bit. I'll put a hair dryer to it and then we'll work on uh, the black and then anything at the end of it, we'll go back over with like a marker or paint, uh, paint pen and clean up any of the areas that we need to clean up. Stand by. All right, so obviously the bottom stitch does not need any of the black. This one does, we'll lay that on there. And again, the reference here is all right, it's going to be hidden. 
sometimes you'll get the stitching covered completely. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of white still showing. And then when you clear coat it, they're all good. So now I'll be able to go around the other side, turn the whole thing around. And bring these on down. So we'll come back in in black and get all that done. Turn it back around the other way to kind of finish the other stitching. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out to gray and then we'll go ahead and do the highlights around the stitching yourself. All right, so in this we just kind of come around and just kind of light little. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and grab um, the black marker and just do all that in black and finish that out. One thing is good to have are these acrylic um, marker pens, they're paint pens, but um, they'll help you out in little things like this. So you grab a little tip, a little feather tip, and you just kind of come in and touch up where you want it to go. Minimizing some of the areas that need to be black. Or... It just really kind of tidies up a lot of the a lot of the places where the stitching is located kind of prevents a lot of white from the background There we go. It makes it look a lot neater. And these were very, very, very fine tipped uh, pins that you can see. Really nice. The big thing is you got to make sure you cap them back up and store them horizontally. Okay. So there uh, is kind of like the finished product is what we'll be finished with. Um, got that tidied up. What we'll do is clear coat it. And the customer... We'll send that out in a couple days when that clear coat dries. So let me know in the comments what else you want to see painted.